Should we use psyllium husk to boost our fibre intake? Well, in 2014, a 32-year-old woman had a severe infection in her gut from a bacteria called Clostridium difficile that caused diarrhoea and crippling abdominal pain for two to three months. Different courses of antibiotics were tried, but when none worked, she elected to undergo a fecal transplant. As per the woman's request, her 16-year-old daughter, who was struggling with her own obesity issues, was chosen as the stool donor. After the transplant, the patient's diarrhea and abdominal pain improved, but she presented again 16 months later with unintentional weight gain and obesity. This was despite a medically supervised liquid protein diet and exercise program. So did this woman become obese because of her daughter's bacteria that now lived within her own gut? So in this video, we'll go through the importance of the bacteria that live within our bodies and we'll specifically look at how we can nurture it using fibres such as psyllium husk. So let's get into it. So when we think of bacteria, we usually think of life-threatening bacterial infections such as pneumonia, sepsis, not good things, but not all bacteria is bad. For every one human cell, there's one bacterial cell. So quite literally, half of you and I we're made up of bacteria. And collectively, that bacteria, it's known as the human microbiome. And the colon, or the gut, is the organ that harbors the densest number of these bacterial cells. And in the diet, exercise, or supplement world, it's these bacterial cells that are often overlooked. And until recent decades, properties of the microbiome and the interaction that the microbiome has with our own cells have been largely unknown due to technology limitations. And right now, there are large-scale projects such as the Human Microbiome Project to figure out exactly how the microbiome works and all of the interactions that it has with our immune system, with our brains, with our hormone levels. Because this symbiotic relationship between the gut microbiome and the host it's regulated and tightly controlled with a complex network of interactions that encompasses metabolic, immune, and neuroendocrine crosstalk between them. And it's because of these complex networks that the microbiome, it's been linked with obesity with other health problems. So when that 32-year-old woman got the bacteria from her overweight daughter and transplanted that bacteria into her gut, Potentially, there was some complex interaction that was happening that was causing her to become obese, to become overweight. So let's have a closer look and see what was going on. So within our bodies, there's a hormone called leptin. And leptin, it signals to our bodies that we're full, that we don't want any more food. And a lot of the leptin in our bodies, it's produced by the bacteria in our gut. So if the bacteria in our gut aren't producing leptin, we're going to be eating more because we're hungrier. We're fighting a losing battle. Luckily though, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We can fix this problem with fiber. So dietary fiber is neither digested nor absorbed in the small intestine. So think of fiber as the food source for our bacteria. So if the bacteria are full, they produce leptin. They tell our bodies, you know what? I've got all of the food that I want. Don't eat any more. So they produce leptin and tell our bodies to stop. The trouble is though, in the classic Western diet, a lot of the foods that we eat, they're refined, they've got the fiber taken away. So if we're not feeding the gut bacteria with fiber, it signals to our bodies that they're hungry, that they want more food. So this low intake of dietary fibers, it may at least in part contribute to a depletion of specific bacterial species. These alterations may result in dysfunctions, contributing to the increase in development of chronic inflammatory diseases, such as intestinal bowel disease, colorectal cancer, allergies, autoimmune diseases, obesity, and its associated pathologies. Now classically, fiber was divided into soluble and insoluble forms, with the insoluble forms contributing to a fecal bulking effect Whereas the soluble fibers, they don't contribute to fecal bulking, but they're fermented, they're digested by the gut bacteria and give rise to metabolites such as short-chain fatty acids. And it's these fatty acids such as acetate and butyrate that have such complex interactions with our bodies producing all of those hormone reactions such as leptin. So overall, it's the fiber that feeds our bacteria and makes sure that those complex reactions that happen between the bacteria and our bodies happen correctly. And we can get all of the fiber that we need from our diet, from fruits, vegetables, whole grains. But there is a potential problem with eating too much fruits and whole grains. They've got a lot of carbohydrates. And if you've seen my videos about the keto diet, 
Overall, there is some research to suggest that a lower carbohydrate diet is beneficial for us in the long term. So yes, with the keto diet, you can get a lot of fiber from vegetables. But what about if we go one step further? And this is where psyllium husk comes into it. So psyllium husk, it's still keto friendly. It's got a very low calorie intake, but it's packed with fiber. So psyllium husk, it's derived from seeds and it can be considered to have prebiotic potential. So what we mean by this is that it promotes bacterial growth, which is exactly what we want in our gut. It helps to support the growth of bacteria that's beneficial to the host and increases the production of short-chain fatty acids. So all of this has been great theory so far, but it's just that, it's theory. What do the studies actually show? What happens when we give psyllium husk to humans? Well, in 34 men with type 2 diabetes, Half of them got psyllium and the other ones placebo, twice daily for 8 weeks. And overall, there was lower total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol concentrations in the people that got the psyllium husk. They also had lower glucose concentrations. So this paper concluded that psyllium husk is well tolerated, it improves glycemic and lipid control with patients that have got type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol levels. So that is a great start and the good news keeps on coming. Psyllium husk or placebo, it was given to people when they consumed a hamburger. And the results showed that the psyllium husk, it suppressed the increase in serum triglyceride levels. So overall, what that study was showing is that by having psyllium husk with food, you're reducing your cholesterol levels. It also helps in patients with constipation, and it helps the constipation by promoting healthy growth of bacteria. So what about the big one? Will psyllium husk or fiber help with weight loss? Well, in 345 people who were trying to lose weight, the most influential predictor of weight loss was fiber intake. And it seemed to do this because the people who had the higher dietary fiber intake, they were more easily able to follow the calorie restricted diet. So this calls back to what we were talking about earlier on in the video. So we were talking about how fiber, it feeds our bacteria. And when the bacteria are full, they produce leptin. And it's the leptin that makes people feel full. So it was a lot easier for people who wanted to lose weight to reduce their calorie intake because their bodies were telling them that they were feeling full because their bacteria were full. And just to finish off the research, I did have a look at dietary fiber in regards to colorectal cancer. But overall, the quality of evidence was low and there was high risk of bias in the included studies. So it does make sense that with fiber, we're going to have healthier bacteria. So in theory, we'd reduce our cancer risk in the gut, but there's just not enough data yet to conclusively prove that. And the one final thing that I want to go through about dietary fiber is that it protects the proteins that we take in. So protein fermentation refers to the bacterial breakdown of proteins to amino acids. The trouble is during this process, there's other potentially toxic compounds that are created. And this process, it normally increases when there's a shortage of fermentable carbohydrates available to the gut bacteria as a source of energy. So if we don't properly feed the gut bacteria, they turn to other sources, they start breaking down proteins, not what we want because they produce toxic compounds. What we want to make sure is that the gut bacteria, they're digesting things that are going to work for us, such as psyllium husk. So why psyllium husk? compared to all of the other fiber options. Well, when it comes to the benefits of fiber, there's insufficient clinical evidence to support a recommendation for other types of fiber, such as bran, but there is enough evidence for psyllium husk, which is the only fiber supplement with sufficient clinical evidence to support a recommendation. So after looking at all of this data, it reaffirms to me how important fiber actually is. So that's why I always make sure to eat whole foods, but I've also recently ordered from Amazon some psyllium husk. And the brand that I've gone for is called Now Foods. And I've chosen this brand because the psyllium husk here, it's just psyllium husk. There's no other additives to it. It's also very highly rated. 